Howdy class, as promised, I'm back with uh, another short little video we're using our flock draw here. Thanks, shout out to flock draw. Um, and we're going to talk real quick about the characteristics of the production possibility curve now that we've defined it, now that we can, you know, we have the conception of it, right? Um, there's a few things that we need to know. You know, what does it mean if there's a point that's outside of the production possibility curve, right? Like what if there's a point right here, right? And so since this is not a combination uh, of tanks and butter that is on or within the production possibility curve, this is what we think of as unobtainable, okay? So this is unobtainable. It's just impossible with our current constraints in terms of how many people, how many cows, how much metal, etc. right? Uh, when we talk about points that are on the actual curve, right, like these three that we have right here, make them a little larger for you. Burp. 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 Awesome. These are both efficient and obtainable, right? And this is really where we want to stick around. We want to we want to be hanging out on the edge of the curve as much as possible. Now, what happens when we have some curves that are or some points rather that are on the inside of the curve? I want you to pause and think about what that what what those points would 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 be. Okay, go ahead and pause and, and think about it for a second. Very good, absolutely correct. It is the fact that these are obtainable, that should say obtainable, right? These are inefficient. Let's make this white so we can actually see it. Inefficient. Oh. Inefficient and uh, obtainable. So these are inefficient and obtainable. Let's see, can I get that close enough? Boop, close enough. Inefficient and obtainable there. Every single point that's inside of the production possibility curve. All right? And like I said before in our earlier video, those points at the axis, right, the y-intercept and the x-intercept, those are efficient and obtainable, but we always want to ask ourselves, are they desirable, right? So desirability, desirability uh, of x and y axis points, all right? I always want you guys um, to be thinking of that, right? Is it very desirable to just produce all tanks and no butter or flip side, all butter and no tanks, right? Usually not, usually not. Okay, so now we need to go into shift. So we're asked what would happen if all of a sudden there is a, uh, a population boost in the cows, right? We figured out how to make, uh, you know, way more, uh, you know, ca cattle. And so as a result, there's a ton more milk and there's a ton more butter, right? So there's some sort of technological advance. What do we think is going to happen? Go ahead, pause the video uh, and do this on your own. All right, we're back. And I hope what you did is you pivoted. We call this a pivot. Uh, and let's go back to that original size, keep things consistent. We would pivot from that same tank point and it would just grow outwards, okay? So as a result of the new technology, so this is because of um, new, uh, let's just call it, you know, cow tech, right? So new cow tech, and as a result of that, uh, we're gonna have a shift, not even a shift, sorry, a pivot outwards of the production possibility curve. All right, now let's say for whatever reason, um, there's just a lot more people in a particular economy, right? So let's say that this cow tech had happened, so we're at this new pro production possibility curve. Now let's say that there are more people in the economy. So I want you to go ahead and, and just, you know, guess right it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt activate your brain and guess how the production possibility curve would move if there were more people in the economy go ahead and pause and do that right now okay so if there are more people in the economy that would be a shift right that would be a parallel shift so we would try and keep the curve as parallel as possible and do a terrible job like like your professor um, but, you know, hey, that, that works. I, I can see that those are trying to be parallel. 
uh, that you know they're they're starting and ending and they're pretty much the same distance all around. I mean, there's that part, but yeah, we can we, we're fine with it. Um, and so this means that now this point that was previously unobtainable is now obtainable, right? So uh, the changing of populations, the changing of technology, all of those things are going to impact the production possibility frontiers, and there and and there's going to be uh, either a pivot. Uh, that's if if it impacts just one of the of the goods and not the other ones, we have a pivot um, where there's an anchoring in that good that is not affected. Uh, but if it helps everybody out, if if it's something like you know uh, the country finds a bunch of oil, right, uh, under you know under the sea or something like that, or underneath uh, you know whatever, then or or more people move there, um, then there's going to be a shift outwards of the production possibilities frontier. All right, that's that's a bit more manageable, six-minute video. Go ahead and uh, send me any questions you guys might have, and I'll either find videos or make videos. I uh, hope you had a good day, and sorry again about the live casting carfuffle. We will try again on Monday, and hopefully uh, it will go smoothly. All right, have a great weekend, guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.